Clear Tai Chi uh, Regional Organizers Mastermind Meeting, and I'm your host, Richard Clear, with Clear Tai Chi. Uh, here beside me is Matt Holker, the Regional Organizer for Maryville, Tennessee, outside of Knoxville, and Jeremy Keeble, who's on in a similar capacity to, to Matt. And then to come with us today also is Chris Walsh up in Maine. I'll let him tell you what parts. Yep, I'm in Hollowell, Maine, just outside of Augusta. Hello, everyone. And Greg Nolmeyer in Michigan. Hey, guys. How are you? And you can tell them what parts. Oh, Ann Arbor, Ypsilanti. Uh, in the Washington, D.C. area. Hey, Art. Yeah, um, I'm in Greenbelt, Maryland, um, about 12 miles east of Washington, D.C. And Barry Leg in Verona, New Jersey, outside of New York City. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. And then Phil Chan in Columbus, Georgia. How are you? And Sheila Bell in Costa Rica. I'm going to let her tell you what parts. Hi, everybody. I'm in Guanacaste, which is the northern Pacific northern Pacific region of Costa Rica, and I give classes in Liberia, Playa Panama, and Playa del Coco. Good to see you. Welcome. And Jim Kelly in Boca Raton, Florida. How you doing, Boca Raton? And it looks like we are back on track for putting up that class in Delray on uh, Monday, this, December 7th, I believe it cool. is. Yeah. The, uh, and then uh, a, a quick word from our sponsor there uh, for Clear 24-7 Qigong, which is how to bank it so that you can practice throughout the day while you're doing whatever other activities that you're up to. And that can be found at, uh, at clearqigong.com. At clearqigong.com. And then the other one, if you were talking about levels of things and you're trying to get a better sense for how that works and what that is, then, then you'd want to take a look at the Tai Chi Roadmap. And that is at Tai Chi Roadmap.com. Tai Chi Roadmap.com. And then- um, We're clever that way. <laughs> okay. So the question for this, the first question or primary for today is how much time do I allocate to each aspect of practice? And so um, I've got my own answer to that, which I'll get to, but then I want to start with you guys. So Chris, you're at the top of the list today, so we'll start with you. Well, that's a good question. I don't know that I actually put together a, in my plan times of allocation for what I'm working on. I, I guess I'm still just going through how I feel about where I am. And I go through the cycle of what I'm working on. So things that I'm still trying to learn that's new, things that I'm trying to maintain so I can increase or not lose the, the skill. Um, but as far as time for me right now, I allocate time in the morning. I get up generally 5 a.m. and I have an hour to an hour and a half that I work, uh, that I do my training. And what I'm working on, it, it cycles through probably on a weekly basis what I'm going through. Um, I, I've been working lately uh, on the, the Falcon, trying to keep up with that. Um, working on what? Falcon. Um, okay, yeah. yeah. And um, I, I've also been working on the 48 form, so Harry, uh, I want to talk to you about that a little later. Um, see what I, I can do there. I've been putting time into that. And it's, it's always in the morning. I, I, I will say, though, lately, I haven't always hit every morning. Uh, it's been a little bit going on in my life. But that's when I schedule it for. Yeah. And yeah. Then, then just uh, the classes, I try and make sure that I'm also going through everything that I'm doing with the students. Cool. And that's, that's directed at what they need. Great. It's tough to say. Um, so some of it is, uh, like I was saying a few weeks ago, like I wake up and I check in, can't, you know, how's my whole body breathing, all that kind of stuff. That's physical, that's energetic. And to some degree, there's a little mental spiritual thing coming in that depending on the day and, you know, how I'm waking up feeling. So some of this, it's hard for me to part out what's what. I do spend at least, you know, some time doing you know, squatting, standing form and that kind of stuff. 
sometimes the form is really looking for um, joint openness, flexibility kind of stuff. Sometimes form is really like, oh, hey, can I maintain a certain state or can I run a certain gin? So it's really hard for me to say how much. And then there are times where I'm doing some sitting meditation and the content of that varies a little bit as well. So it's hard for me to say kind of, you know, physical energetic versus E or, you know, spiritual or something. It's I'm, I'm confused by the question. <laughs> Maybe that's what so I should have started. Part of what I'm looking for is that, you know, there are different as parts of aspects or parts of training that you've gotten there. And then how do you allocate your time to that? Or how do you, what's the logic kind of behind how you allocate your time to that? And that kind of thing. And so it's, you know, it's, so that's one of the questions that, that people ask though, is like, how much time should I spend doing this? And what kind of things should I really try to put most of my time into? And, and that kind of stuff. And so this question's trying to get at that a bit. Um, yep, Art. Well, again, I'm as with the others. I um, couldn't definitely pinpoint a certain amount of time exactly for the different um, categories of, of exercise and practice. But um, I I start at well after well with the morning of quiet quietness and sitting and spending um for i've been able to get a, a good 20 minutes or so of marrow washing and and then after that and before that quiet quiet meditation and just trying to relax um thinking well i've been lying horizontal all night so i sh my body should be loose as far as the joints go um, as as they, they would be throughout the day where um, where I haven't had the effect of gravity say on on my my joints and backbone in particular and just try to relax 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 more opening out so I spend I can spend um, that's about uh, approximately 40 minutes maybe a little more maybe a little less altogether um, and then I do some uh, exercises, sort of, I guess, internal exercises of um, these five basic uh, internal organ exercises and some um, exercises that I do for the, the, the Fagang healing, um, just to try to keep up with, with that ability and so that can be um, approximately half an hour, give or take a little more. And, and after that, which I consider exercising and, and loosening up, um, I, I do some, some stretching and more, um, maybe 10 to 15 minutes of actual loosening exercises, um, whether sort of standing, bouncing, shaking and, and stretching and then from there, um, I will do do the form work that has, um, well, I can spend it varying amounts of time depending on exactly um, where I develop sort of, where I notice strength or getting a lot of energy in a particular process or, um, facet of say, say Tai Chi, if I feel, for example, uh, um, a, a lot of um, an electromagnetic energy and I work on developing that for a while. And, um, for, and then that can, how much time I spend on that can, well, that'll just affect you know, how much time I spend sort of with, with the form work and, and, and energetic work. And I will do some uh, maybe different, some different styles, um, Xingyi or Baigua for, for variety and to feel energy flowing in a different, different manner, sort of. Um, so that can be um, another 20 minutes to half an hour. But, um, Again, it, it can vary depending on situ the situation and sure. things. But, but I, um, as far as the progression go from the quiet 
meditation, mirror washing, to internal exercises, to uh, the form work, and in between sort of some more physical exercises, the squats and the push-ups. Yep. So you've got a, a sort of a progression there. I get it. And then do you do the progression where it's pretty much rote stuff every day, or do you do it until you feel a certain way about it, and then, okay, now the next stage? Well, I, I have sort of a a set sequence and um, sort of itinerary, for example, of, of uh, the exercises. And depending on if something strikes me, for example, I feel a particular energy or something feels especially energizing, I'll maybe work on developing that more, or maybe I'll work on something where it doesn't feel as energizing as it might be. So um, that's that's where some of the variety comes in of, of the time spent and the exact exercise. Cool. But that's basically it. So, thank yeah. you. Harry? Um, well, like Chris and, and Greg as well, I, I don't know that I've thought of it in exactly those terms, but I do find that the various uh, parts of the training seem to happen anyway, now that I'm thinking of it in those terms, because I'm regularly teaching uh, various classes, which is going to get me going through all the physical exercises, a lot of the Lee stuff, the squats, uh, standing on one leg, you know, that sort of thing. And I do a little of my own working out here um, with very, with not crazy weightlifter, but I do some of that. Um, and then uh, between the various students, some beginners, some advanced, whatever, I'm going over applications. Uh, so that's happening. Uh, even here during COVID, at least currently, and when this is being recorded, um, we can have limited private students. And so I do do that. Uh, and after this call, Paul Shansky's coming over. We'll get in some push hands. Um, I'm getting form work, whatever I'm working on in classes. Uh, and then for me, it's what am I currently privately working on and it usually derives from what i've just done with you when i find out what i uh, am not so good at <laughs> that maybe i thought i was or something new that i'm going oh my gosh i want that and you want me to have it obviously and so uh, that's constantly changing now covid's really wrecked that in certain ways because it used to be every couple of months i'm seeing you somewhere and and you're gauging what i've done in the last few months with whatever You've, uh, it was really great seeing everybody at the, uh, those of you that I saw, of course, at the last workshop here two weeks ago, because I haven't got to see most of you most of the year. So, yeah. yeah. So I do miss that. But uh, I was getting a, a boost in one way or another every two, three months, uh, at least. Um, yeah. But for now, yeah, I've got plenty, the, plenty COVID, to work on. COVID's not going to be here forever. So. No, exactly. So, but I have plenty, plenty, plenty to work on. And, and also, it was very revealing uh, a week or two ago when we were uh, all training together. Um, things that you thought you had. Uh, yeah, you maybe you have them at a, a certain level, but nowhere near what you consider where you want us to truly have certain certain elements. So uh, that was fair. And I'm, and I'm constantly pushing my own too. Yeah, right. With that, so uh, and, and, and it's the it's the same thing that I've said in several of these calls now. But I know it's not always the same audience. A lot, what, what, whatever it is, whether it's spiraling, waving, uh, magnetic, what, whatever. Uh, um, many people think they have some of this skill, but really, you got the equivalent of a dripping water faucet of the skill. And in all of these things, you can have a massive volume where they're very tangible and really dem demonstrable and, and so on and so forth. And that's what I'm working towards. So thank you. You'll see that with the wave of internal power there if we get to do it in January. Well, not the, we have that on the video, so you can see it there. But then with the wave, water fighting method with that you, you if you come out of there not being able to wave it won't be because it didn't try <laughs> <laughs> and you did and, and or that you didn't try right okay uh phil you're still on mute oh there he is so i'm not as systematic as i suppose i should be um I am working on trying to engage the electric uh, because I've been studying, you know, I, I went over the arthritis program. Yeah. 
And then um, as much as possible, I'm trying to, to do um, marrow washing as I go to sleep. So for the first few hours when I go to sleep, I sleep on my back. And so to be able to do it as I'm falling asleep and then to have it continue while I'm sleeping, like that just seems like very, very cool. And then I'm doing a course with you beginning in January. So um, I, I, I tend to focus on what's up. And so with that, I, I studied in depth the practical guide to internal power and then Within the next couple of days, I'll be starting to really look very closely at the essentials of internal power. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. you'll see that course that you're talking about for 10 weeks. It'll be, it'll keep you busy. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> but anyway, I, you know, I had, I'd never gotten around to looking at the practical guide and it was, oh, this is really cool. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah, the, good news, the good news on that course, one of the things is that I've got in there daily, a daily practice regimen. Okay. All the way through with it, I've got steps of this is what your daily practice should look like now. This good. is what your daily practice should look like now, like right. that, all the way through. So it'll be, it'll, it'll, it'll help mold a certain kind of a study habit there too. Yes, that's, that's what I was hoping for. Good. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Sheila? <clears throat> Yeah, so um, what it looks like in my life is as much of the day as possible, I, I sort of dip in for five or ten minutes when I can of whatever's convenient depending on, you know, what I'm doing. If I'm standing in line, for example, or if I'm driving or if I'm, you know, sitting on a couch, whatever, it's, it's going to be a different um, flavor. <laughs> but as far as practice and saying, you know, allocating and, and sort of having a structure, I leave two hours every morning from the moment I wake up. And I don't say from the moment I open my eyes, because sometimes I'm doing things before I open my eyes even. And um, for two hours, I divide it up into um, some acupressure, some stretching, some meditation, um, different things. And then once I stand, then there'll be pretty much standing, um, breathing, simply standing, or qigong. And then uh, that's my two hours in the morning. Then my day kind of starts and I'll, you know, get busy. But I'll have about half an hour that I leave for form at some point during the day. And um, if I have a class that day, usually I'm doing the form with the students. And if I don't have class, then I'll do it on my own. Um, and I think that usually when you're practicing, the things you need to work on sort of arise, you know, the 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 practice that you have has a way of showing you what you need to work on. So right. if you're paying attention, then you know where you need to shift and focus and, and sort of give more time to that item because it's going to be your new favorite for a while. And, um, and I've really enjoyed that process because it's, it's like, you're not really doing the same thing every day. You say, well, I'm going to do my breathing, but the, but the breathing is evolving and changing. And, and, you know, if you get to a certain level and find you're lacking, then you go a step backwards and practice, the, the level before, before you move on. So that's been really nice. And um, also I like to mix things up a little bit. I just found out recently, for example, that <clears throat> to do the bone marrow washing, um, I, it's a lot more effective for me if I get up and do first some brushing and patting and bouncing and then lay back down to do the bone marrow wash, which you recommended also that I do my bone marrow breathing before beginning the actual washing. And all, all of that really cranked up like, at least on, 100% more than what I was doing. Say that, say that again. Um, Get it out there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there's a lot of background noise here. I apologize. Um, that so to do bone marrow bone washing, washing. Yeah. to prepare myself in order to do a bone, bone marrow washing, first, I'm standing up and doing the padding and the brushing and the bouncing. Then when I lay down, first I will do bone marrow breath breathing before I start the bone marrow wash. And that's and it's become, you know, amplified significantly by doing it that way. It made a big difference in doing the bone marrow breathing. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So, yes, very much. So uh, bone marrow breathing without bone marrow washing is a new concept. 
ex could you explain what that is? Well, that was that's something we covered in the advanced um, Vagong. Oh, okay. Workshop. Yeah. So okay. Which we'll be we'll be having that workshop again with some. So just as a brief note for those of you that were there, um, and, and, and even if you weren't, the uh, when I what I had to do to create the advanced levels for the Fogong in the proper order was basically I had to write out the whole thing. And so instead of writing out one workshop, I basically wrote out what in, what's what my best guess is going to be two to three workshops. And with that, he says three. I say one. Just you know, we'll be there eighteen hours a day. I don't, I don't you know, twenty four seven practice. Anyways, the uh, uh, the um, and one of the things that came out of that is there are some things that everybody has to work on on that that have to do with self-development that really are more like um, self-contemplation sorting out aspects of your mind and how you how you think and process and, and getting into your subconscious and that kind of stuff and accessing that and kind of getting things getting your junk psychological junk kind of works through and out and all this other stuff anyways we're going to turn that into a product so that you can work on it at your own pace at home. And that'll actually be now workshop six for Fogong is that you have to do that work. And then seven, eight, nine, and or 10, that'll be the workshop then that only that people can do after they've done that other work. But we're gonna make that as a product or, or a, you know, a, a DVD, course. a course, thank you, <laughs> that um, is for sale um, that people can get and I'm, I'm working on what I know the mental part, what has to go on there for the stuff you have to work for yourself. Uh, what I've got to figure out is what kind of material we're going to put in there because there'll be some, but it'll be limited. Um, and what I'm going to be trying to do is to hit enough to give you an idea of why that mental spiritual work needs to be done, but not, uh, but not so much so that people then kind of blow that part off, which cause that's really the primary reason for the course uh, on that at that level. For what you're gonna have, what you've got to be able to do for advanced work. Anyway, so I'll be putting that. I'm I'm working on putting that together here pretty directly. Um, anyways, um, so yeah, and in, in that I may put like the bone marrow breathing, maybe one that I put in there actually, but we'll see. No, so it wasn't. I was sleeping during the workshop. No, I went to. <laughs> it's not. It's what? It's in the gym. Oh, well, it'll be in the course you're taking yeah. in January. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's yes. In there. So yeah. You'll, you'll also, Phil. If yes. you um, do, you have a copy of the book. Yes. The energy book. The energy activation, yes. cultivation. Yeah. That that uh, there is a segment on the bone marrow breathing before bone marrow washing. If you look in the book, you can get some, you know, some idea about what we're talking about. Cool. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Yep. And now a word from our sponsor. The internal power that comes at the higher levels of Tai Chi can seem mysterious, but that is mostly because Tai Chi students don't see the big picture yet. They don't even understand what the higher levels of the art are, much less have a plan to get there. Even though the senior masters mostly agree on what the steps are, they mostly don't talk about it. On the TaiChiRoadmap.com, I outline all of the steps of Tai Chi development. Everything is explained so you know what to do, when to do it, and why. This is the complete roadmap to Tai Chi mastery with an explanation of all the steps from rank beginner to senior master. Again, that is a free course that you can access online. Go to TaiChiRoadmap.com to sign up. That's TaiChiRoadmap.com. Jim? Yeah, the, uh, you know, my exercise, like I guess a lot of people are making a point of, is very uh, ad hoc. It, uh, it varies from day to day. I mean, just, uh, just this week I've been working alternating 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. shifts and 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. So, so there's not really a lot of consistency there. But uh, what is consistent, though, is that you know, whenever I'm, I'm out, I'm practicing breathing, even sitting here and, and waiting in queue to, to be able to speak and practicing a little bit of the, uh, 
the breathing aspects. I have been working a little bit more on the physical, just because I'm having uh, recurring issues with the with knees. So I've been trying to strengthen legs and and trying to do a little bit more uh, lunges and. Um, have you, you done know, Have you done any of the magnetic electric? Yes. Yes. Or that's how is that, that treatment? Immensely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's another thing that if I'm driving around and I get a chance to stop somewhere in a, you know, parking lot or a park or someplace uh, where I won't draw any attention. <laughs> it's uh, it, that's an easy exercise to work on. The, the rooting is an easy thing to work on at any time. I, I do a bit of that. Uh, like I said, the breathing, I've been getting a little bit more into trying to uh, uh, do the, the visualizing, uh, trying to uh, open up the bikeways and, you know, trying to sense things yeah. around. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, it is, uh, it's a constant, I think we had a conversation about the 24-7 the and just trying to work little bits and pieces into daily schedule, you know, whenever I can. Uh, Last night I was out doing some painting at uh, at somebody's house, and you know I was standing there with the roller, and I thought of that uh, the movie with Mr. Miyagi, and <laughs> <laughs> just trying to <laughs> just trying to work some of the movements and the you know the relaxing the shoulder, relaxing the arms, and yeah, yeah, just get some of the uh, the basics of the Tai Chi into uh, different aspects of daily life. So up, down, up, down. Yeah. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Bend knees, Daniel son. <laughs> um, no, that, that's really you opened up a whole new idea. <laughs> no, no, no. Because there are a lot of things that we do that are really boring and often distasteful that involve repetitive movement. So so it's not something, you know, painting can be like an okay thing and even window washing, but I mean, cleaning toilets and mopping floors to me yeah. are total grunge work. Yeah, but truly, just... you can integrate it as much as the Miyagi thing. There's no reason not to. Just, just, just mention marriage and see how many people you can offend. <laughs> <laughs> This is why you're sitting out on the back porch today. Okay. Uh, the, uh, uh, but I was going to tell you real quick on the uh, on the um, I'm having to stop the car for the magnetic electric is that you know there's the physical practice to really build that and then you can feel the magnetic and the electric in it. Start tying into where you really feel the energy all the way through really well, and. Work it to the point that uh, sitting there that if you start thinking magnetic, the magnetic turns on. If you start thinking electric, that the electric turns on and you can feel it inside your body. And so there's the trick part. You've got to do it enough physically that when you think about it, you really do feel the thing. And then you'll be able to do it sitting in the car because you'll actually be able to work that energy too. And then that, that starts to take that jing and make it at a more functional level for uh, both healing and, and fighting with it as well yeah and I, I i just hit the point and i'm sure you know a lot of folks have passed it already but where i, I can just start to do that now with the with the chi and with the energy uh, inside you know inside my body or or you know through the hands and at the seminar uh last week you you had showed us the vibration uh, energy and i'm trying to work on that one a little bit uh, being able to to turn that on. So yeah, I, I can see that some of these things can be just, uh, you know, just under the surface. That's and, right. and, and yeah. The weird trick for people is that I meet a lot of people that think they're doing that and they've got just such a small amount. And so I still would do physical exercise enough to be like more, more, more without straining or hurting yourself, but building it, building it, building it, building it. <laughs> and then when I'm doing it where I'm not moving, am I getting that kind of a level or is it this, you know, I can do it this much when I'm doing it physically with assisting it like that. And then just a little bit while well, I'm trying to increase that little bit that if somebody was standing next to me, 
and I'm doing it at, at towards, you know, not necessarily at full tilt, but, but more that they'll look, that they'll stop and go, are you like doing this thing right now? And it's like, yeah, why are you asking? Cause I can feel it. <laughs> you know, and then that's, that's when you start to get where I think about having that kind of thing. Not because I want to affect the person beside me because I really want it going on as opposed to, I think it's going on. So see, so, when, you, when, yeah. when you talk about doing it with the physical to amplify it, to, to, to use to make it sure, a little yeah. bit to build it, so mm -hmm. you can do that in form. Yes. Where when you're or in doing, the isolated exercises, yeah. When when you're doing uh, up and out, you can be doing the magnetic, and when you're doing down and forward, you can do doing the electric. Or yeah, or vice versa. Yes. Or, okay. And then you can do it with the. Um, I'm blanking on Wudong energy ball. ball. Usually isolated. Yeah. Okay, and that would be one another place. And what would be some other physical things where you could be working on the? Well, anytime you can do it where you're like for that initially where you can rock back and forth. And then if you can get it so that there's a shift in your weight, you can get it so, that, but enough of a shift, you can start it with that. And eventually that'll build up. If you start thinking about it a certain way, it'll turn on because that internal shift is still happening even though externally you might be either shifting imperceptibly slightly or maybe not at all for the, okay. for, for magnetic electric for what we're talking about. No different. Okay. Things. okay. So just not one, one way to do it is if you're standing in line, you'd be shifting forward and back and then feeling it turning on. Yeah. I'm not happy unless the whole crowd who's waiting in line in front of me, that's annoying me is also swaying back and forth. <laughs> So if you do some wavy things, maybe the line will sort of dissipate and you get through sooner. <laughs> you have to be careful with that one because it's directly <laughs> it like uh, security. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And then you go, what? I wasn't doing anything. And they're like, uh huh. Back up. You said back up. Anyways. <laughs> All right. Um, Jeremy? Uh, yeah. So for. For the way that I practiced for, I don't know, a number of a long time, uh, is you know, you, you got to understand that you are your own worst enemy and kind of know where you're going to fail your own self in your own practice, right? <clears throat> so what I what I found was is that when I was just practicing a little bit every day, uh, I would do a few things and then you know go do you know whatever else I was doing that day. And I was like, man, I meant to practice that yesterday. I totally forgot that thing. I need to focus on it. Um, so I typically write myself an outline of things that I need to be practicing or currently working on so I don't miss anything. Uh, and, and within that, you know, itemized list, uh, I'll put like focus points. So one of my focuses right now is just overall relaxation. Um, and there's, there's points of me that, need to get that more and more every day that I need to really work out lower back. So that's like a focus point of everyday practice is just kind of trying to work that out. Um, and you know, itemizing my practice list that way, I don't miss anything. Uh, and once I kind of have something where I get something new that is an addition to that piece, you know, I'll kind of maybe change around my practice list, but it'll include a lot of the energy work uh, or if I'm doing some kind of form, you know, maybe I don't do it full on, but I'm doing it. I'm doing it just that day and just walking it through with the movements and kind of the chi energy turned on slowly. So it's not like I'm doing some crazy amount of physical work every day. Uh, although you do want to do that where it's a little more intensive sometimes. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of how I think of, of my daily practice and incorporating all the things that I have in a practice. Cool. Routine. Matt? Well, you know, like every, like so many people here, um, you know, it changes day to day based on what, you know, what maybe kinks in the system I need to work out or whatever might be going on. What, uh, you know, what piece I'm really focused on for the next piece of my development or, um, you know, some little bit of wisdom that I got in class last night. That's like, oh, I got to work that in my Tai Chi form or what, you know, whatever it is. Um, and so it can be, the specifics of it can be very different. 
Um, but there are some things that I always do, kind of make a point to do every day. Um, and when I really break down the way that I think of my training and, the, and the, specifically the question being the time that I allocate to the different aspects of my training, I tried to kind of think of it as, a, as others were talking here. And what I've, what I've sort of come to is I've got about 10% of my time I spend thinking about and focusing on building energy in one way or another. I've got another about 10% of my time thinking about building or refining skill. Um, and so, you know, sometimes there's bleed over between those two things, but it's, I, I figure it's about in the neighborhood of 10% for kind of each of those. And then the rest of the 80% of the time that I'm really training to most of the world wouldn't even look like I'm training. It is that daily stuff. And it is that, that, that kind of standing in line, walking around, getting from my car to the grocery store, even though it's raining and it's cold, then I want to have good Tai Chi principles and not be running, going clonk, clonk, clonk. And whatever else it is, I'm trying to build habits and, and, and take the information that I've got out of my daily practice, take whatever skill I've managed to build and whatever um, you know, body qualities I've managed to develop or, or energies that I've managed to run or whatever it is, and put it into practice and make it that much more a part of me and that much more instinct. Um, and so, you know, keeping my root down, uh, one of the, one of the tests for the level two push hands is to keep your root down a hundred feet for at least an hour. Um, and so trying to keep my root down at least a hundred feet pretty much all day. Um, cause if I do that and that's on autopilot, then I know I can keep it down there for an hour when I'm trying, um, you know, and these kinds of things, uh, I really try to, I, I look for opportunities to do that, but, I, uh, but I also, um, I try to keep the skills on as habits as much as possible so that I don't have to seek out those opportunities anymore so that I'm really doing it on autopilot. And then what I find is when I'm getting that going pretty well, um, with any one particular skill when it's off somehow, or like if I am rushing, you know, if I'm running from the car to the grocery store or whatever, and it's going clonk, 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 I really feel it. Like I actually notice, like, Oh, I'm doing this wrong. And I can, it calls it out and I can correct myself. And, uh, and that's when I feel like the, you know, that's the point at which that skill is really actually useful for me in my life. Anything shy of that, um, it's not quite there yet. It's just not doing what it should be for me, for my body and my health and my mind and whatever aspect of it, my energy, you know, that it's, that it's supposed to be working on, um, unless it's, unless it's pretty much doing that for me kind of all the time. Um, and it's really obvious for me when I'm screwing it up, uh, then I don't have that yet. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I spend probably 80% of my real training time, really trying to put this stuff into my just day-to-day -day operating system. Um, and that's, that's kind of where I put most of my efforts these days. Anyways. Cool. So I uh, typically most of when I wake up first thing in the day, I do marrow washing and I do marrow washing for anywhere from a minute or two to 20 plus minutes, depending. Um, and then from there, I'll usually do, a, and I may do some marrow breathing before I do that. I might end up in some relaxing and some relaxing in order to be in the best possible state for doing that bone marrow washing. A lot of times then from there, if I get up, I'll breathe at least a little bit before I get up and going. And I tend to be, so that when I come out of that, I'm, I'm fully up and ready and raring to go. Um, when I do a shower, what am I trying to say here? Well, I'll just say it the way I'm trying to say it, which is at the end of my shower, I do brushing, patting, and if I remember to do it, and I need, I need to start remembering to do it more, the shaking, and I do this where, and my point there is that that takes some, and I do cold water before that and some other things. Anyways, it's kind of part of the process, and so maybe it takes a minute at that time, maybe two at the most. And then I've got other things that I'll do, like if I'm going to drive, I have a tendency to sit up straight in the seat and then relax. Um, and this thing, so this is part of the 24-7 idea, 
but then I'm really getting the stuff in there and so much so that it becomes an automatic to do that so that it feels funky if I'm not doing that. Um, and so there is that. And then I've got routines on, I'm a list making kind of guy. So uh, that I go by list and I've got routines at different parts of the day. And most of them are short. I can do most of them in a couple of minutes, three, four, five minutes most, but I'll take different aspects and do that. And so like one of the things I do typically early midday is I go through a set of exercises that's like fingertip push-ups and pull-ups um, and some, and a, and a couple set routines where I'm getting, uh, basically the equivalent of 30 to 50 really full powered squats all the way down, all the way up, um, that kind of thing. Um, the, uh, Harry actually got to sit with me for a routine I do every evening, um, before I really, I'll usually sit and watch a little bit of TV or whatever as the last thing at night before I do that. I'll pull up my list on my phone and I go through that by myself. And Harry, when he was here, I was like, Hey, I always go through this by myself and you're sitting here. So grab me, punch me, do what, you know, do whatever. And I went through the same, same routine. And so we actually got to see that, that routine and, and it really didn't take long, what, five minutes, 10 minutes. But, and then when I first did, if it's, when I first did it, some of those skills are, or if I add in a new skill, that skill might, it might take as long as the whole thing does the rest of the time but if i'm turning on an energy there my goal is to get it at full holy crap kind of you know full tilt and to be able to maintain that and as long as i can tell that yeah i could stand here and do this for the next 20 minutes no problem and then there are times when i would do that um separately that i'm like okay that's that i've jumped into that way of doing things now the next one and and so probably went through, when you were here, I probably went through, what, 20? Like that? Pretty yeah, it sounds about right. And it was pretty rapid fire. It was boom, boom, boom. Um, and built on, yeah. like, like. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> and there was one or two where you're like, oh, I hadn't considered that with the body there. And it, so it did make a little Good bit of difference. Oh, yeah. So it was cool. And it was fun for me to, to work against you, not knowing what exactly you were going to be doing and going, holy crap. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so there's all of that. And when I get something new, which I try to do on a semi-regular basis, um, I do that thing as much, or when I discover something new, um, and I do put some time into taking things that I know, for instance, rooting, I've been doing rooting training at, at a high level and depth and all that stuff since, well, now coming up on 25 years, right at 25 years. And I keep running little experiments on the rooting to see, well, what if you did this with it? What if you did that with it? What is it like when you do this? And I'm also trying to discover what is really going on in the deeper aspect of the training. Now, I'm not suggesting that you guys do this part. I'm just telling you this is something I do. And so one of the things, for instance, that I've discovered lately is that if you do team well enough, fully enough, it has some really interesting, high-level, pretty cool side effects that aren't side effects. It's part of what it actually is, is a tingling listening skill or, or this feeling, uh, listening uh, sensitivity stuff. As a jing, uh, most jings have more than one thing that, they're, that they do if you're really fully manifesting that expression of the energy. Well, tingling's got a number of things that it does and I keep finding that, it, that even for whatever I've discovered or know, whatever I've been taught and know about it, that there is more depth there in terms of what it actually does. Um, and so there's some, a couple of very interesting things that are coming out of that. And then it jumps to super high level stuff pretty quickly. Um, same thing with root, which I started talking about. It's building, when you think of root, you're really building that physical capacity to drop that energy. You're building the amount of energy you're drop. You're building the speed that you can do it. You're building the, um, all the different aspects of what you can do having or developing or building or doing a thing. The other thing that's happening with it is that you're really building the strength of your mind. Your E is getting stronger based on how much of that you can do, both the depth of it, the volume of it, the speed of it, and all those things. And so it's really building your mind stronger to be doing that stuff. And there's a point there where it builds the mind strong enough that you can do things like with root. I'm not dropping root, and yet the person who's standing in front of me 
feels me as if I'm really dropping root, but it's because the mind has developed in that kind of a way where it's take where it's taken on another another aspect. It's 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 a it's more it's more. That's the best way to say it. it more and different, and it's your mind that's doing it, but not your mind thinking it's doing it. Your mind actually producing the effect that somebody else can tangibly feel and know. Anyways, when I get something new then I tend to do it as much as I need to until I own it, including whenever I'm walking around during the day, if it was a physical thing and I did this once, it was, okay, I'm doing this thing to the point that if I was out in public, they were like, I'm like, chill out, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what? What? Uh, okay. You know, the, <laughs> yeah. But you get the idea. Uh, but doing it until I own it and then I do it some more. And I'm trying to make it that I could do it in my sleep you know, that as long as I'm alive, uh, basically that I could, that I could do that thing and not have any more thought in it other than the actual idea that, Hey, I want to do that. And that it would already start to happen. And that if I'm not going to do it physically, that it would be like, Hey, don't do that right now. You know, that I'm actually having to almost stop it from happening. And then I get it quite, and quite often, once I get it to a certain level, I'm doing that when I do other things like walking to or from the bathroom, standing in line with, most of that being obviously the internal work. I'm not standing in the line these days. I did this a long time ago, uh, not that long ago, but you get the idea. The, uh, but I'm not trying to get the security to haul me off either. Uh, anyways, hopefully that's helpful. Questions, thoughts? I, I had a thought that may be relevant or may not be. Um, but when Matt, when you were talking about your whole process. I, I studied Tibetan Buddhism. And there's a concept. So I would just say I'm a beginning student. So there's a lot I don't understand about it. But when they talked about enlightenment, and there's a certain amount, I'll, I'll give an example of being the skill of being compassionate when people are really being ugly to you. And, a skill I need to master, I, I admit. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so the thought is, some people think that when you become enlightened, that just happens. And my, my guess <laughs> is that what happens is you make conscious decisions to do that over and over and over again. And then eventually it becomes sort of automatic. And then you have to work on doing it when the stress is even greater, like walking yes. when it's raining. Right. And then there's a part when if you're enlightened and you're really being stressed, there's a part of when you're not doing it, you become aware of it more quickly. So I guess what I'm saying is it seems like the, the thing you're talking about, which is really relevant to Tai Chi skills, is also relevant to this, to what I understand as the meditational skills and what happens in terms of spiritual development with, within Tibetan Buddhism. So I just thought I'd mention it because I think it's very cool and it's, it's um, developing that skill in one discipline would be relatively easier to develop in another discipline sure yeah yeah no i get that i, I get the connection actually it makes um it makes sense um and yeah I, I feel like anything that really is something that is meant to be studied over a longer period of time and has like a process of development like that it's uh it's it's just going to require a little bit more of that kind of thinking, or at least uh, it's going to be accelerated. Uh, you know, the, the, the process is going to be accelerated by that kind of thinking. Um, you know, certainly there are people who get some amount of Tai Chi skill, uh, or maybe you know, get some distance on the path in, in Buddhism without doing the that kind of daily grind work where they're kind of going in and getting their lessons or whatever. But they're they're not the ones who are ever going to be like masters. Mm -hmm. yeah cool all right guys uh i think we've taken up what time we could today i know our business meeting went a little bit long but we'll uh we'll do more next time and 
Um, hopefully you guys got a lot out of today and those listening at home and the, uh, uh, if you're interested in the kind of things we've been talking about, the two things that kind of we got into at least to some degree here, definitely the 24 seven Qigong at. Yeah. At clear Qigong.com. And that one really talks a, a lot more. It gives you, it gives you some great ideas for Qigong exercises, some very specific Qigong exercises that Qigong clear does daily it is, it is literally his like daily routine stuff that he makes sure to do a little bit of every single day but it is also that kind of advice for how to work the training in to other things you're doing like when you're driving a car or like when you're sitting in you know standing in line or in the shower or whatever else you may have to be doing during the day how to turn all of those little opportunities scrubbing toilets into training opportunities um, and so that's, that's what the 24 seven Qigong is all about. It's, it's clear Qigong 24 seven daily training in Qigong, and that is available at, uh, clear Qigong.com. So, uh, one of the things is like, I got an email saying that everything was on sale. Is that still on? That was, uh, the black Friday sales. No, that's, um, that was, that, that wrapped up on, on Monday. Oh, okay, so or, but something, something will be coming up Christmas, I would presume. Be, yes, the twelve days of uh, twelve days of clear Tai Chi savings on the way. Yes. Okay, <laughs> so when that kicks in, how much of a discount is there? Uh, it it goes through, it's from course to course. Um, a lot, you know, some of them are like twenty five percent because it's you know the twenty fifth of December. Um, some of them it just depends on what the material is. It's, okay, it's so different it's, stuff on different days and different sale lengths and it's a whole big 12 days of of extravagance there's a little bit of it that's overstock there's it's, yeah there's some of that too it's just some, some of it if there's if there's extra stuff on our shelves that might end up on sale i should okay. <laughs> yes the uh anyway so then the other one is the tai chi roadmap at tai chi roadmap.com and that's really talking about the levels which is helpful for you taking something from a beginning very physical place, knee skill to up through more higher levels, including making it very internal. And so at the Jing level, and then uh, the couple levels that are past that. And so it really talks about what those levels are and how they work. And that's at the Tai Chi. That's at Tai Chi roadmap.com. And that's really helpful too, because the higher up that food chain you get, the more internal the training becomes and the more 24 seven it can be. Um, and so these, the, those two things work together really well. So yeah, so clear, uh, clearqigong.com for the 24-7 training with the specific Qigong methods and for more about developing it through those levels and making your skill more internal, uh, taichiroadmap.com. Cool. Thanks, guys. Great talking to everybody and seeing everybody, and we'll do more next time. And now, a word from our sponsor. What is internal power? Most people only understand external exerting power, which is another way of saying tense muscle strength. Bigger, more tense muscles equal more power. That's external power. Internal power comes from pretty much anything except tensing your muscles. There are many sources of internal power and tapping into them is more of a mind skill than anything else. This is where the phrase mind over matter comes from. My name is Richard Clear and internal power is what I do. Students come to me for the mind over muscle secrets of internal power that are hard to find anywhere else. Over the past 40 years, I figured out how to get students on the fast track to effortless power. I created a one of a kind online program that is getting such amazing results for my students that I put a money back guarantee on it. Find out more at internalpowerkeys.com. That's internalpowerkeys.com. Thank you.